how to bring your Nomad Sculpt to Blender. So you're all finished in Nomad. Well, you're not really finished because there's a few things that you want to do in Nomad first. The first thing that I always do is turn on the grid. And if you hit front, you should see the grid. If you don't, you're probably in perspective mode and you want to be in orthographic. So if you go to this little camera, if you're in perspective, you're not going to see it. So just go to orthographic. So we'll tap on our scene and I want to take all of these. I want to take everything, even the cameras, the lights. I just want to grab everything, hit the gizmo and you want to move it up till it's on this red line. I've already done that. I think originally it's like down here when you start because it's everything starts in the center. So you want the feet to be along that red line. The reason I do this is so when you bring it over into Blender, it's already level when you import it into the program. You don't have to move it. It's just a simple little things that makes makes other things easier. Uh, usually I just give my scene a little save. So now we want to make sure all of these different parts are baked. I don't know how to bake. What do you mean? By baking is it just means that wherever they are, uh, it's going to become the permanent point of the object, like of the gizmo. It's a little confusing. I can't even really explain it that well, but we're going to bake it. So first, let's go to our scene. So for example, we have the dots. And I'll go to my gizmo and hit bake. And that's it. And you see how this is here? This is going to move once I change, once I reset the gizmo for these little dots, it's going to move to right up in between the, the midpoint of the dots. So if I go to pivot, auto, now it's right here and take pivot off. So now we go to the horns. You see, it goes right back to the center, gizmo, bake, and you don't have to do this pivot, auto pivot. I'm just doing it just to kind of show you. So do that for all of these meshes. There, there are going to be a few uh, tricky ones like the eyes. So for example, the eyes, they're in a mirror. So I'm just going to go to the mirror, validate it. Yes. Make sure you rename it and then bake it. And it looks like it's already baked. So when I do pivot, auto pivot, it's already in the right spot. So just go down. You'll have to do that with all these mirrors and just make sure that everything is baked where it is. Okay, so I'm going to turn the grid off. So once everything is baked, which means you can go down the line, you can be on gizmo and you can just go down the line and this bake won't show up because it's already baked. The next thing you want to do is collapse all of your layers. So for example, the skull mask, we'll go to our layers and just hit merge all. Remember the body, those that shading we, we did? We just want to go to layers and just make sure that everything is um, just one layer. So for example, if you go down to horns, you can see this little green. That means that there's layers there. So just go there, merge layers, go there, merge layers, and then you're all good. So next, let's delete the lights. We don't need them. And what happens if you don't is they'll come over into Blender as lights. They don't work the same way as lights in Blender. They're just like extra things that are in the scene that are going to be confusing. The cameras as well. So I'm going to take the cameras and delete so that we just have all of these meshes here. Okay, everything looks good. So the next thing we want to do is export this as a GLTF. So we're just going to go to this little folder here. And here we have export GLTF. Mine is on all, so that's going to be everything in the scene. Export GLTF. Okay, I named mine Ghosty. And I'm going to send this via AirDrop to my Mac. And then from there, I can send it to my other computer. So I AirDropped it to my Mac. And now the, the GLTF file is available somewhere other than the iPad. So then we can open it on the PC. Just one more thing I wanted to note about the Nomad Scope file. Uh, you can just close this down and not save it. And then we'll open as your previous file before we made all these changes, like before we deleted the lights and stuff like that. So, so you can still have that older file. If you want to also have this file, you can just go to your folder, 
do save as, and then just do new. So ghost D1. So then you can have both of these 3D files. If you want to open this one back up, and this is the previous one, and hit yes, it might be dark. And that's because it's drawing from the autosave. Just go to autosave, discard, yes. Okay, and then just open it back up. So just go back to it, open it back up, and now it's the original file. That's a really tricky thing about autosave. I think it's misleading and I think it's confusing. So I just wanted to point that out. So this is the file that I just sent over from my iPad. And what I need to do is get this over to my PC. If you're working on Blender on your Mac, it's fine. It's already there. But if you're working on a different computer like a PC, then either send it through some sort of sending application. If you're connected through a wire, drag it into the PC. Um, you just want to make sure that the file can be accessed on whatever device you're using Blender. In my case, it's my PC. Okay. So I kind of get it connected. It's a little annoying to connect a Mac and a PC, but it is possible, like a wireless connection. So here it is, the dark tower. And I usually just put them in this folder called downloads. So now I'm just going to drag this into downloads. It's in this I can access through my PC. So let's jump to the PC. So in the software, I've just switched over to my PC. Let's go ahead and open up Blender. If you want to get started in Blender, a great place is my brand new crash course for absolute beginners for Blender on Skillshare. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. Our input, our input. Okay, so we're open in Blender. I'm just going to take this box. I'm going to hit S and make it big. And then I'm going to use this little thing to shrink it just to give our character a little bit of a base. I'm going to hit one. And notice how this is perspective. I want to change it to orthographic. That's a lot easier to see our horizon line. This red line is the same exact red line that we saw in Nomad. That's why we moved our character up. So now we can just go to file, import, GLTF. So we click there and then I'm just going to go to downloads with a Z and then I'll go to my file and import GLTF. So now our file is here. So first let's tap Z and then go into rendered mode. Let's zoom out so we can see our camera. Let's hit zero to go to camera view. Let's pull out this little side menu on the right here. Let's go to view and then go to camera to view. So this will allow you to move around the screen and it's actually going to change the camera to whatever is in this box. Okay, that looks about right. So now I'm just going to tap on the box underneath and just stretch it so it covers the left and right side of our camera view. We can slide it back as well if you want. Once you're happy with your framing, be sure to go back to the menu and turn camera to view off. So by default, Blender is going to be set to EV. I like to change that to cycles. So you just go over here on the right to the little camera and change from EV to cycles. EV is less resource intensive, but cycles just look so much better to me. I'm going to slide that menu in and then just scroll down and tap on the light. I'll hit the number one to bring us back to orthographic. That'll make it easier for me to move the light. So once I bring it down, I want to change it to an area light instead of a point light. So in the area light settings, I want to make the size of the light a little bit bigger. You can actually go to the frame and you can make it bigger that way as well. And this light is very bright, so I'm going to go to the power and let's make that a lot lower, maybe 200. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So that is how you get your character into Blender from Nomad. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you want to see how I would light this, I usually use my own scene called Light Bright. Uh, that's actually available on my website if you're interested. I'm gonna open this character in Light Bright. That way I have some lights set up and I have a few things set up exactly the way that I want them. So if you're interested in that, check out the next video. Uh, as for this one, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. 
be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go more in depth, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes where I am a top teacher. I have about 50 classes, both Procreate and Nomad Sculpt. I also have a few classes on Udemy. So if you want to learn more or you just like my style, you like the way I teach, you want to support me, those are some other places that you can do it. Thanks again. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.